Every developer needs a reliable way to manage their software configuration files, which we call as dot .files. Dot .files are essentially a place to store all your personal configuration for different tools and software. The goal is simple. It should be easy to apply to your setup on any new machine without having to manually reconfigure everything from scratch. If you don't have a setup yet, this video has everything you need. I'll walk you through how to build your own dot .file system just like I did when I started with nothing. There are a lot of ways to setting up and managing dot .files, but after trying different approaches, I landed on one that works best for me, which is using GNU Sto. GNU Sto is a tool that creates symlink from files in a central directory, for example, your dot .files directory to their proper locations in your system, like your home directory or dot .config. This means you can keep all your config files neatly organized in one place, and Sto takes care of placing them where they need to go. With GNU Sto, I can literally go on my new machine, clone my dot .files, and then start running the sto commands given the fact that I've installed sto on that new machine. And with just a single line, I can have the things I want up and running in my new machine with just a couple of things to install here and there, and I'm already flying. I didn't even use any installation scripts that I had. In my opinion, it saves so much time, especially if you're someone who cares about your dev environment and you just want to have it up and running as fast as possible on your new work machine or whatever it is. Sto is pretty good at that. If you're on Mac, you can just install Sto with brew install Sto, and then you can run Sto dash dash version to check what kind of version you're on. Before we start running Sto, it's important to understand how Sto Simlink works and how your DAW files should be structured as that's the key to making sure that the Simlinks are created correctly. If you don't have a DAW file, of course, just go ahead and make one. So for example, DAW files or whatever, you can do something like dots as well. This is just an example, but in here, we're essentially going to see all these base directories for each of the software that we're going to store somewhere as our DAW files. So if I go to the left side and navigate to my .config, you'll see that I have these fake configuration files in here. For example, we have the name of the application from app one to five, and we want to create our dot .files to have the same directory name as the name of the applications. So let's take a look at how the GNU Sto file system works before we jump to the terminal and mess up our symlinks. There are usually two cases that you are going to run into. The first one is the default home directory. So any files or configurations that are already in your home directory. And the second case is the files and the configurations that are inside the home slash dot config directories. So how do we structure our dot files according to these two file directories? First, if we take a look at how our home directory is already structured, we would have files like the home slash dot tmux.config. So this file just lives in our home directory. If we want to set this file and symlink it into our dot files, we need to create a base directory that is called as tmux. It makes sense to call this base directory as tmux because we are storing our tmux configuration files in our dot files in the tmux directory. From there, we're going to act as if this base directory tmux is our home directory. We would then move our .tmux configuration from our home directory into this directory, which we will then use sto to symlink it back to our home. And then that would be our file structure for any configuration that lives inside the home directory. It's the same for zshrc files as well. We would then create a base directory of zsh and I would generally just move my ZSHRC and then symlink it back. I would even put my Z profile in here as well. So it depends on how you want to lay out your dot files as well. But what if the files and the configurations are located inside the home slash dot config directories? These can be a bit complicated at first, but for example, if I have the home slash dot config slash envim and I want to symlink this to my dot files, what I would usually do is I just go to my dot .files, create a base directory called envim because that makes a lot of sense to just name it envim. Then from there, I'll act as if the envim directory I created is my home directory, which means I have to create another directory called dot .config slash envim or just dot .config and then move the whole envim directory in here and symlink it back. You can see the same thing for the Yahtzee configuration as well. These are just the two common cases that you're going to run into. Before I go and show you how all of this works, just a little tip about your configuration files. So when it comes to symlinking with Sto, 
If your .config directory is a mess, it would help a lot if you arrange it first. For instance, if I navigate to my actual .config, you'll see that I have each software and application in its own separate directory. Some of it is a symlink, some of them is not. You want to keep your dot files as clean as possible. And that starts from keeping your configuration files clean as well. A little warning before you start rearranging your whole dot configuration files, just make sure you understand that it could break some path if you have that path set in your RC file or anywhere else. So don't forget to update the new directory path for those applications. All right, so let's say we have a fake zshrc file in our home directory and we want to symlink this to our dot files, which is the one on the right here. So let's go to the home directory and see if this file exists. Okay, so it does exist. So we're going to come back to our dot files and currently we don't have any base directories for our zshrc file. So what I'm going to do is make that really quickly by doing something like this. And now we have that base directory. We're going to CD into that. And there's actually two things we need to be careful here before we move our zshrc file to our dot files. Just make sure that you have a backup of that file. So you would copy the fake zshrc file to your dot backup and name it something else. Still can be scary sometimes, but yeah. So let's go ahead and move the zshrc file in the Z shell directory. And let's confirm that it exists. Before we can run any stow commands, if we go back and check our home directory, run the same command, we should now see that this file does not exist because it has been moved. If we go back to our dot files or like the root of our dot files directory, and this is actually the golden rule of running stow commands, you always need to be at the root of your dot files directory, whether it's going to be sim linking or unsim linking the directory or a file. So we would do something like stow z shell, enter. And how do we know that this actually works? So go back to our home, run the same command, and we should now see that sim link appear right there. If we go back to our dot files and check, we also have that file perfectly inside our dot files. The thing I want to mention as well is that if you make any changes in this dot files, like for example, I go into here and I just say something like hello, right? We're going to save and quit out of here. If we go back to our home directory and we open up our fake zshrc file, we should see the same changes appearing here. So this means the changes are basically linked between files. It works exactly like the normal sim link that you would usually do with the sim link command using ln and all that. Something else that you might actually run into as well when you're doing this is that you might have sim linked the wrong file somehow, some way. Because if this is your first time using stow, I doubt you're going to do it all perfectly. So here's how you can unstow something. For example, we have this file already sim link, but we want to reverse it. So what we would do, like I said before, the golden rule to run any stow commands, just go to the root directory of your dot files. To unstow, what we can do is stow dash capital D and just enter the name of the directory that you stowed before. If we go back here, run the same command again, we should see that this file no longer exists. And this is totally normal because the file just gets removed from your, not removed, but it sort of just returns to the default behavior where it's no longer sim linked. So then if we check in here, we should still see our file in here. So if we go into our Z shell, all we need to do is just move this file back to our home directory, run the same command and it's there again. Okay, so how do we move the files or sim link the file from our .config directory to our dot .files? So currently I have an Unreal Envin directory in here. Again, like I said before, if you haven't done this before, just make sure you back up whatever it is that you're doing first. Now coming to our dot .files, we don't have the base directory for Unreal Envim yet. So I'm going to make one with make dir envim. We're going to cd into here. And then we need to act like this is our home directory. So the directory that we need to create after the home directory is .config. So make there dash p dot conf slash unreal envim. We can now move our unreal envim to our dot files. Let's just move that here just to recheck and make sure that it has moved. Okay, so now we can run stow. And the directory that we're going to run stow on is going to be the directory that we created in our dot files. And I almost forgot we need to be in the root of the dot files directory. Then we're going to run stow and vim. 
Now go back here, we run the same command and we should now see Unreal Nvim sim linked to our dot files. If for whatever reason you want to sim link a single file that is inside a directory. So for example, here I have a WES config inside the WES directory. Now we want to move this WES config here to our dots and then sim link it. What I can actually do is again, create that base directory, go into the base directory, then from here, create the same file structure that you would normally do if you're in a home directory. because we're only moving a single file in that directory, it would make sense to include the WES directory itself. Now that we have the right file structure, I'm going to go back to the root and then we're going to move the file now. So we're going to move the file from our .conf in our WES term directory and target that file and then move that to our .files in the WES base directory, which is in the .conf slash WES. Now we can run the stow command to symlink this file. So that's how you would symlink a single file from a directory. I can't just talk about setting up dot files without talking about how to manage them as well. Most of the time we throw our dot files into some sort of version control like a git repo and then we would push them to GitHub or GitLab and then use git client or git commands from there. I know it sounds like the easiest kind of repo to manage, but to be honest with you, there are things I wish I don't have to keep doing repetitively or constantly when managing dot files. The feeling is very familiar like when you view diffs on GitHub, something about it just feels right and safe. I get the same vibe here but with a lot more control over my repos. I've been experimenting with Git Kraken desktop even for something as simple as dot files. One of my pain points I used to run into was just forgetting about what I changed. This is probably like a me problem, but I would say it kind of helps me reflect on the stupid commits and changes I made and pushed. This solves that because of the clear commits that is available for me to just see directly and jump to from here. Being able to see the history of my commits and walk through them is very good. I have control over all my branches and work trees that I can just drag to merge or rebase and bring on the new changes. If I compare this to the diff views in the client, like in NeoVim, you can still somewhat edit the diffs by going into the file and hit a git diff key binding. Or I can open the git logs from lazy git and walk through all these ref logs. It is really only interactive in a sense where I can press enter and go into the file from here just to amend the commit or stage it. I can't just directly edit from this pane. It's not visually interactive as this, or how should I say? Here it literally feels like it is built for Git, which it is, comparing to terminal base Git. One thing I like about it though is that if I make any changes in my NeoVim editor and I go ahead and save that change, it actually reloads the diff of that file in real time. I also like to keep machine specific configs in sync one for my work Mac, one for experimenting and one for my like main device and so on. So instead of switching between branches and risking config collisions, I use git worktree to keep them totally separate. And that way each machine has its own dedicated folder checked out to its own branch. This means I could just go on my new machine, fetch the current changes, except now we have two new branches. So I can just create the work tree according to that branch, unstow the old ghosty config, reload my terminal, go to the new branch, and then run stow to bring all the configs for that specific machine. But here's the thing, when it comes to managing my git work trees, doing that through the client has always been kind of nerve wracking. But here I can look and compare the different branches of my work trees. I can also switch directly to those work trees and manage them separately. I absolutely love how I can just amend commits. This is one of those actions I don't want to be typing in the terminal. Reverting commits is also really easy to do here, just like you could do in lazy git, but it's built closer to other git operations. Also, when it comes to submodules, like my NeoVim config, that is sort of bloated with plugins. I'm just kidding, but check out my new M setup from scratch here on top right if you haven't already. You could still manage submodules very similar to lazy git but without vim key bindings. Also directly edit the files right from here, but I wished it would jump to the first diff of the file so I don't have to scroll and find it. But I like this because sometimes it's just a one word change like true to false, so I would do that from here. For some reason, my muscle memory is telling me that I could directly edit the file from like within this page, but no, I'd have to jump to the editor page first and then end up losing the split diff. So I wish I could just do that right from there. If I could request one thing right now, I would ask for Vim key bindings in this editor 
and the UI itself. I'm not too serious about the big features though, but imagine if this whole UI were to have BIM key bindings. Speaking about the features, the improvements to commits make sense to me. Let's say I just made some small changes. I don't want to take one minute of my time to think and write a clever message for that commit just to make it sound good. The thing about this is that I can just generate a quick message that sounds clean and professional at the same time. I can use the built-in AI tokens, which works perfectly fine but prioritizes speed. Or I could just plug in my own API key like I use Gemini here to get a more personalized suggestions by coming down here and editing the instructions like I currently have one for my commit messages. And look, I'm not someone who thinks AI needs to be in everything we do as devs, but for things like this, I'm totally okay with. It makes tasks like these feels less like a chore. There's so much more that you can benefit from Git Kraken, especially when dealing with merge conflicts, but this is a dot .files experience, so yeah. Despite my preference for terminal-based workflows, there are times when purpose-built tools are simply more effective. You can use my referral link below to get 50% off Git Kraken Pro. Hopefully you guys can go ahead and set up and manage your own dot .files configurations. Also, if you guys are interested in terminal workflows, definitely check out these videos. I'll see you all in the next one.